Did someone out there convince you to start raising rabbits and you think, man, that sounds too easy. It's too good to be true. Well, here's seven reasons why it's a little too good to be true. Well, hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Chris from Rustic Rabbit. Now, if you're new to our channel, we provide guidance for an average family to raise your own meat, grow your own food, do all that right there in your backyard. And then we bring you into the kitchen and we show you how to make it into something special. Okay, so I might be the guy that actually convinced you to start raising rabbits, and I gave you seven reasons why you should, and I stand by those reasons. However, if you're like me, you're skeptical, right? If it's too good to be true, it probably is. So I wanna know about the challenges. Well, I'm gonna give you those challenges now. And you can go on the internet, you, you know, YouTube or wherever, and you can find all different reasons why it's, it's a struggle, uh, or the different challenges people have. But I'm gonna give you the reasons that you're gonna come across that I did that I really didn't find very much on the internet. Uh, just, it just came through experience. And number one is this, learn behaviors. So rabbits, you know, their babies are, are in there with the mom for the first, you know, uh, four to six weeks while, before they can be weaned off. Well, while that's happening, they're watching everything their mom does and they're picking up all of her habits, good, bad, and indifferent, right? So if they learn a bad habit and then you move them to their own cage, they're gonna continue that bad habit and it'll be perpetuated throughout your, your breeding stock. So one of the bad habits I've noticed is a, an impatient mom will start digging through her feeder and she gets through her, her sunflower seeds maybe and she's trying to get to her pellets and then all it's just starts falling and spilling over and through the cage. Well, where does it go? Well, it goes where all the urine and the manure goes, which means you've lost that feed, it's gone. And if you do that across enough rabbits, you're starting to lose quite a bit of feed, which means money. Reason number two, boo! Did I scare you? Probably, but I scare you to death. See, now if you're a rabbit, that might have been it for you, right? That's how fragile they can be. So, it, you know, thunderstorm, that's really scary. That could be too much for them, you know? Every once in a while, um, I had a time when a, a, a cage door had a spring on it and it shut and it was too loud and it literally scared the rabbit so much that they jolted off and their back legs are so powerful that she actually broke her own back and she was paralyzed, so I had to put her down. That's how fragile they can be. Uh, I had another one, I, I'd never heard of this. Uh, my mentor was an 18 year breeder. He came over to help me. Uh, we were trying to get some, some rabbits uh, pregnant. Uh, and at one point, um, you know, he checked them and I guess that was enough to scare him and had a little bitty rabbit heart attack and pff, fell over and died. That's how easy they can be scared, literally be scared to death. Number three, and I bet you don't see this coming. So rabbits have what's called induced ovulation. They can get pregnant anytime. They don't need to wait for a certain time of the month, right? Uh, but they have to be willing. And you know, some of these girls, they either, they're just not in the mood or they don't like that buck. You can put them in this cage with this buck, she's ready to go, but she's like, that guy's a jerk. I've seen the way he talks to the other rabbits and she doesn't want anything to do with him. So literally, you have to kind of pick and choose how they're breeding and when and all that kind of thing with who. Um, and sometimes you'll just strike out. I mean, I have a proven doe that's given me several litters uh, with a few different bucks and she just went through this phase where she's like, yeah, no, I'm not really feeling like I wanna be pregnant. So I went months where I could just every day could not get her pregnant. And then one day she just said, yeah, okay, I'm ready. Uh, some people talk about, you know, the moon phases and you know, all different types of, of, of reasons. Who knows, man? Uh, I can just tell you, sometimes you're gonna have luck, sometimes you're not. And when you're trying to keep the freezer full and keep meat going, that becomes a problem. So that's why I would suggest, you know, having more than one female, more than one male, just to, to be able to kind of move around if one in particular is just not having it. So number four, not all vets treat rabbits. So it's basically, you know, they're like a prey animal. They don't live very long, um, they're, they're fragile. So, you know, you think, well, there should be lots of vets that, that handle this all the time. Well, except that people don't really have rabbits as, as prolifically as you think. So the bottom line is you either have to find a specialty vet. Um, so out of every 10, maybe there's two. Um, so it's harder to find one. And then secondly, because there's fewer, the wait is longer. So sometimes you just can't get them treated. And that's a huge pain. Number five, as a parent, I can tell you, my does will not appreciate my negative evaluation of their parenting skills, but I can tell you, it is a challenge at times, okay? Especially the new moms, it's their first timers. Sometimes they get it right, no problem, first try. Other ones, I've had one where she gave a full litter right on the cage wire after a you know, nest box in her cage and everything with hay in it and she's all good to go and has the babies right there on the floor anyway in the middle of winter when it's 20 degrees at two in the morning. So by the time I get out there, they're all frozen to death. 
So that does happen. They're not awesome at being moms sometimes, and so you have to kind of like uh, outthink them and help them along. Number six, pee and poop, okay? I gave you guys reasons why it's a good thing and you can use it composting or in your garden or whatever you want, you know? But if you don't have a garden and you don't want to garden and you don't have a compost pile or anything like that, then you better have some sort of plan because you get a ton of this stuff. They, the amount of, of, of manure coming from rabbits is just, it'll, it'll blow your mind. Uh, so definitely have a plan for all that. Number seven. So for those of you with, with wives that have long hair like me, um, she's brushing it, it's really pretty, but it's also everywhere. It's in the bathroom, it's in the kitchen, it's on the couch, it's all over the place. I don't know how she has any hair left because she's like a giant rabbit. Rabbits shed constantly. Their hair is everywhere. And so what I don't understand is, you know, people always laugh, with, oh, do you save the fur? No, and even if I could, I don't know why I would. They shed constantly and it is just all over the place. You'll see, you'll find out in these videos, you'll see. There's hair everywhere, all the time. So get used to that, that's a thing. Okay y'all, so those are my top seven challenges for raising rabbits. Uh, like I said before, you know, the reasons I give for starting a rabbitry and, and getting into that far outweigh any reason that's a challenge. Um, those challenges are very overcomable. They're not meant to discourage you. I just wanted to be honest with you guys about stuff that I've experienced that I didn't really read on the internet with all my research before I got into it. Um, so if you have any questions, certainly leave, leave it in the comments. Uh, again, I'm, I'm asking that you subscribe and share our videos with anyone else that you might think would be interested. Um, and like always, God bless.